All right, it's hour number two on a Friday. That can mean only one thing. Senior producer from NFL Films, Greg Cosell, also co-host of ESPN's NFL Matchup Show, where this very game, Bills-Dolphins, will be featured in great detail. Greg, how are we doing? You ready to roll into weekend of week four? This game on the schedule in your, uh, in your hometown here. Yeah, and uh, just so everybody knows, Greg's segment brought to you by Scott Lawnyard, an official commercial site work partner of the Buffalo Bills. And I guess we need to begin with the team that put up 70 last week, Greg. You know, Steve and I had a chance to watch that game back, and there were cavernous holes in the Denver <laughs> defense for stretches. There were times where even after the snap for – two seconds you had defensive players standing still like they weren't even moving it's like they were frozen I I don't I don't know how you get to that place I know there's a lot of eye candy pre-snap with this Dolphins offense but to absolutely freeze and do nothing that's like the worst possible thing you can do against that team yeah and I think when you don't play them and have a background in what they do uh, it becomes harder Obviously, the Bills uh, know this offense reasonably well. They did play the Dolphins three times last year, so they have a much better feel for how to go about defending it. Uh, I think there's a lot to unpack here, so let's kind of walk through it a little bit. But I will say that I think the loss of Jordan Poyer is big because I think safeties are really, really important when you play against the Dolphins. Um, You actually saw that in the first matchup a year ago when I believe they were playing with two backup safeties. Isn't that correct, Brownie, in the first matchup last year? Yeah, they year? were they were missing five starters on defense. Yeah, I think it was Johnson and Hamlin who were playing on the back end correct. in that game. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, but any, as I said, let's unpack it a little bit. Um, and, you know, I, I've had some conversations with people. I've given this a lot of thought. You know, I, I – you guys know I think about this stuff a lot, but I also try to learn from people smarter than I am. You know, um, you you use the correct term, Brownie, eye candy. So what happens is because of all their motions, it kind of sh- shrinks your defensive menu a little bit. You can't get to all the calls that you want to get to because there are so many motions. Um, you know, and I think that ultimately because they play so much out of 21 personnel, um, this is not really a big issue for the Bills per se because they're a nickel defense overall anyway, but you almost have to treat 21 like 11 because of the way they use Ingold. He's a motion player. He moves around. He's split. He's flexed. He's, you know, he's very often detached. He's, he's almost like an, just another tight end. You know, uh, he, he's, he's not really a fullback in a strict sense. Um, so then what has to happen? It's hard to play single high safety against this team because Hill and Waddle are really, really difficult to play outside the numbers, especially if they're in motion, getting free access off the ball. So you need to play a lot of split safety. So then what? So the couple of things have to happen. Your linebackers have to be really good in the run game because you're not going to get a ton of safety help if you play split safety. Um, We know that it's timing and rhythm based, that Tua hits his back foot, the ball comes out. That's the way they want to play. That's the way they're built. So you have to be able to take away that first window. But then if you do take away that first window and you're playing split safety, what has to happen next? You then have to be able to pressure with four because you're not going to blitz a lot here because you're going to leave yourself too vulnerable. Now, there'll be selective pressures, obviously. But that's not going to be foundationally what you do. So you have to then be able to exert some kind of pressure on Tua with four if you take away that first window throw. That's right. We've been talking about that kind of thing all week, that if Tua, it's okay if Tua pats the ball, but if he, if he pat, taps it twice, it takes too long. I mean, you've got to get there consistently because the one time you don't if he pats the ball three times and then releases it a double move route on the outside with with that kind of speed and it's a touchdown I mean that's all there is to it if you don't get him right away the field becomes too big for the DBs to cover every inch of it and the Dolphins can get there yeah and, and I mean just look at the hill touchdown which I'm sure you looked at as you said Brownie numerous times the touchdown on I believe the second or third play of the game 
Yep. Right. That was a classic case where the Broncos took away the first window, or or let's put it this way, Tua didn't feel comfortable throwing it into the first window. It looked like it might have been there, but we don't know what's in his head. And then Hill just adjusted his route and kept running and got behind the quarter safety, uh, who who theoretically was the player that took away the first window. And he just sat in a clean pocket with no one around him and then hit Hill behind the quarter safety. It probably looked to most people as if it was a coverage bust, but it really wasn't. And it's just that their four-man pass rush literally gained not a yard to get close to him. So you have to be able to at least squeeze the pocket with your four-man D-line pressure. Right, and the Bills employed a similar approach to what you're describing back in 2021, and it worked. Now, granted, Tua is a much different quarterback now than he was two years ago, but A.J. Epinesa knocked him in his ear hole, and he got knocked out of the game in the first quarter, Right, and the Bills won 35 nothing. Um, I don't know. They also I didn't have Hill then. That is, cr- that is true. So, I, yeah. you know, do they go back to that, elements of that? Who knows? Um, I will say that I think Buffalo's pass rush looks much improved from what we've seen in recent seasons with rushing four. Now, that's not yeah. the only reason that they now have 12 sacks on the season and are tied for second in the league, but they're also affecting the quarterback even when they're not getting him on the ground. Ed Oliver's playing out of his mind. I think he's generated pressure. Yeah, he's generated pressure on an NFL best 27% of his pass rushes this season. That is a sharp spike in his type of production. So, yeah, I think there will be some simulated pressures, as you suggested, Greg. Um, the question is, if you know that most of the time – you're not going to get there. What right. do you think of the idea of kicking Greg Rousseau inside and using his length as a deterrent to keep Tua from throwing over the middle and at least taking an inside passing window away? Yeah, I was thinking about that as well, Brownie. Theoretically, you could do that with with Rousseau and Epinesa at times, who's also a tall player. Um, something to consider for sure. Uh because you, as you said, you know, no matter how well you play on the back end, you're not going to take away the first window, you know, 80% of the time. That, right. That's not going to happen. Um, you know, I, I think so much of, of when you play against this team comes down to studying what they do and understanding tendencies. And believe me, I, I can't speak to that because uh, the Bills will have five guys who are, who are studying just that in major detail, you know, guys who are going to work 22 hours a day for three days just to figure out all that stuff, um, you know, trying to get a feel for exactly what happens off this motion, what ho- happens off that motion, what happens based on splits, so that they'll have a really good feel and that back end players and linebackers as well will understand that, hey, here's Hill now, when he's here, he's going to run these two routes. Hey, when he goes into this motion, He's going to do this. You know, that's what teams do. And they str- you, you have to have such a really good feel for that because obviously it happens so, so fast. The other thing with the Dolphins, because of the speed of the receivers, is their quick game rhythmic throws end up being two to four yards further down the field than most teams because of the speed of their receivers. So when you think of, let's say, three-step drop timing and a ball being caught at you know, a certain yardage, you know, usually if it's a slant type route, you might be what in the seven, eight yard range. They're catching those kinds of passes in the 11, 12 yard range because of the speed of the receivers. Right. Right. So it does, they force you to adjust. There's no question about it. How much, and I I guess one of the reasons this game pops uh, around the country is because the Bills are number two offense in the National Football yep. League. The Dolphins obviously are number one after the week they had. But the 70 points they put up last weekend was historic. And sure. I guess we can start back where we started the segment. How much are the Broncos culpable in that 70 points? Oh, sure they are. I mean, you know, I, 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 when a game like that happens, it gets it snowballs and it gets out of hand. You know, it, it's... It, yeah, look, they're not going to put up 70 against Buffalo. Now, look, they have a great offense. Just think of the second, the, the middle game last year, the one in Buffalo where it started snowing in the fourth quarter. 
wasn't that something like a 35 32 game or something along those 29, lines? I mean, yeah. it was both teams were in the 30s, correct? 32 29 was the final. 32 29. I mean, you could easily see a game like that. They're not going to shut the Dolphins out. So, you know, the question is, uh, you know, how do you, how do you at least control them? I mean, that game, you know, Tua did not put up huge numbers in that game. They made plays, obviously, but they're better now than they, they were a year ago. Um, the run game, obviously, was a big factor against Denver, and that becomes really important because, um, they, they, you know, they added uh, A-Chain, and A-Chain's got explosive speed. Mostert does too, but now they have two guys. So, you know, that's why also, you know, uh, Milano and, and Bernard are so, so important because they, they have to be big factors in the run game because, to me, again, Sean McDermott's a lot smarter than I am and knows more football than I do, guys, clearly, but you really can't play this team by committing safeties to the run game. You know, now, can you do that occasionally, depending on situation, down in distance, your understanding of what they might try to do, tendency? Of course you can, but you're not going to play that way. It's not like you're playing the Tennessee Titans and you're trying to stop Derrick Henry, you know, so you have to be really careful about that. So your linebackers have to be able to tackle and, and you know, you can't let the, the Devin A. Chains of the world, you know, get get to the third level of your defense because he can that guy's a track star. Right. Mm -hmm. Flipping it over to the Miami defense, they did give up a ton of yardage and some points yep. to the Broncos. Russell Wilson throws for over 300, and really there wasn't much of that in garbage time. Um, there was a good amount of it through the first half of the game. Vic Fangio is obviously the new coordinator down there, and most of the people we've talked to down there, Greg, are of the opinion that this is no longer an attack, attack, attack defense. It's more of a bend but don't break philosophy. How do you think that could lead to opportunities for Buffalo's offense in this game? Yeah, they're much more of a selective pressure team, Brownie. They're, they're not what they were prior to Vic Fangio getting there. He's never been a high, high percentage blitz defensive coach. Um, you know, they've got some good pass rushers on the edge in Chubb and Phillips, who both, by the way, as you know from looking at their games, I'm sure, can be deployed as movable chess pieces in their sub fronts. They can both line up outside. They can both line up inside. So they move those guys around. Um, the, the, there's been a pretty consistent mix of man and zone. They play more split safety than cover three. Um, they do play a lot more man than people might think. Even though they don't pressure with it, they play a lot more man than people might think. Um, you know, with Ramsey not being a factor this year, being out, you know, they, they've essentially, it looks like they've decided that Kohu is, is pretty yeah, much outside. the outside corner with uh, Howard. Um, you know, they started the season with Apple. It looks like Kohu was kind of settled in to that role with Bethel being the uh, the slot. This past week, after playing a lot of dime the first two weeks, they did not play one snap of dime this past week. So I don't know how they'll play that. I don't know how they'll match up to the two tight ends. Um, you know, they've used Holland, the two safeties, Holland and Elliott, kind of interchangeably, both be playing in the box, uh, you know, and playing on the back end. So I don't know how they'll see that in their man coverage schemes. Yeah, uh, but but it's not it, it's not a defense you can't move the ball against. I mean, you can move right. the ball against this defense. And Jalen Phillips is out for this game with the oblique is that definite? injury. Yes, yeah. he is out with an oblique injury. At least that's what oh, Miami that's Dolphins reporters are reporting. Uh, so that's Emmanuel, a big deal because yeah. Agba will probably yes. play in his spot, and he is nowhere near the the explosive player that Phillips is. Right. Well, if, if So we're three weeks into this season. What will Miami's defense see when they look at Buffalo's offense? Yeah, I mean, and I'm just being honest. I, I don't think Buffalo's offense to me, okay, and, and maybe I'm missing something, and maybe if Ken Dorsey was on this call, he'd say I'm wrong. I don't think Buffalo's offense presents a ton tactically. Like, I don't think, you you know, you really struggle with what they do. Like, I don't think they give you a lot of eye candy, although it's interesting. The, they did give you the, the Diggs uh, jet action on the uh, Davis touchdown last week where the, uh, the commanders were rotating from single high to cover two, and Forrest 
who never should have done this rotating to cover two, got sucked in by out by the jet motion and took a step forward and therefore was just not in position to play the uh, the, the corner route or sail route. But, but, you know, normally the Bills offense is to me much more of an execution offense as, as opposed to an offense that gives you a ton of eye candy. And even though they're trying to run the ball more as well, you know, I don't think even in the run game, I think they're just trying to line up and run the ball. Um, you know, I think they still rely heavily on Josh Allen to make big time throws and big time plays working in the run game to try to just take some of the, the load and the pressure off him. But I don't think they give you a lot. Like, I don't think that Vic Fangio is going to feel like this is a really difficult defense tactically to play against. That doesn't mean the Bills can't put up 35. But, I, you know, I, I'm just talking about, the, you know, the approach that they have. Do you think there is an underbelly to this Miami defense that can be exploited more often than not. I'm, I'm looking at, I know they got rid of a land in Roberts this off season because they just felt he was way too much of a liability in coverage. Um, they've got Jerome Baker. They move Van Ginkle inside a little bit more now than they used to, who used to be more of an outside guy. Yep. Um, do you feel they're more athletic inside now at the linebacker level from a coverage perspective, or might the Bills still be able to exploit that to some degree? They're definitely more athletic because David Long's, a, you know, a much better athlete than Roberts right. as well. Um, so with Long and Baker, who predominantly play on the inside, they do get Van Ginkle in there at times. This past week, Van Ginkle even did line up on the edge a little bit. You may see that with Phillips yeah, out. With Phillips this out. could be a Van Ginkle edge week, you know, because he does have a little more juice than Agba. So, so they're definitely more athletic, Brownie, with Long and Baker. Um, you know, the question is, in their man coverage concepts, who's going to match up to – uh, Dalton Kincaid and who's going to match up to Knox. Um, they've played a little less 12 personnel as the season's progressed, but they may feel you never know. It becomes specific to an opponent, you know, what the Bills want to do. Right. They certainly can play 12 personnel pretty much anytime they want, depending on, on how they feel the opponent will match up or, or not match up. They may feel really good about it. Um, so we don't know the answer to that till they play the game. Uh, but, you know, to me, the main thing will be protection. You know, with Phillips out, um, that's big because Phillips would give Spencer Brown problems. Um, Chubb's still a good pass rusher, but to me, Phillips is just a more explosive athlete. Chubb's a really good pass rusher, but Phillips is more explosive. So, um, you know, I think the Bills pretty much play kind of the way they play, guys. Don't you think so? I mean, they're going to try to get a rhythm passing game going. They'll yep. take some shots. They'll try to work the run game. You know, they'll count on Josh to make some Josh plays. Um, and that's kind of the way they play. I, you know, I don't think to me watching tape again, without knowing all the tweaks, I don't think they do a whole lot differently on a week to week basis. What do you guys think? Well, that's what we were saying. When you get an offense and certainly the 70 points catches you, it's one of these offenses we see every once in a while where the other team says, we're going to have to beat them with our offense, holding onto the ball, shortening the game, lessening the possessions, you know, that kind of thing. And the bills, you know, may feel like they can do that with a short passing game, running the football effectively, and just cutting down on the possessions and keeping Tyreek and two on the – you always hear that kind of stereotypical strategy. Yeah, but, man, I, oh, man, that's hard to do, right? It's hard to do. And, you know, you used to hear that, Steve, all the time with Peyton Manning. You know, yeah. teams would say, well, you want to shorten the game, blah, blah, blah. That's great. But so you cut them from 12 to nine possessions. If they score four touchdowns on the nine possessions, you still have to score 30 points, you know? Right. So, and I, I don't know if, if the bills, you guys are there in the building. So, you know, whether you talk to people or just hear the chatter, I don't think the bills think in those terms with Josh Allen as their quarterback. I'm not saying they're not going to try at times to run the ball and maybe depending on how a certain drive is going to try to stretch it out a little bit. But I don't think their overall approach, Brownie, you jump in here too. I don't think their overall approach is going to be to shorten the game and take the ball out of Josh Allen's hands. No, no, I don't anticipate that. I could see them using their run game a little bit more, you know, some of that downhill run game out of 12 personnel, um, maybe to even control the clock a little bit. I mean, the Bills have, you know, I believe it's half a dozen – scoring drives of nine plays or more in the last two weeks, including two 15-play yeah. drives that were nine minutes or longer. You do that, there's a good chance that the Dolphins have one fewer possession than they usually have in a game. And one fewer possession 
means they're scoring one less touchdown or field goal. So, and, and, and that could be critical depending on how it, the game flow, you know, plays out. Right. Um, but yeah, but I think that they're also going to take some shots. Um, and, and look, like we said, that 32 29 game last year was, you know, in some ways, uh, it's probably going to be a similar style game, you know, where, and I, I don't know what Josh's numbers are offhand in that game, but I think he played a pretty good game in that game. Yeah. They were yeah. down eight with seven minutes left and he put the Cape on and that's right. That's right. Yes. He, he set the up the game winning field played. goal at the gun. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yep. So he played out of this world uh, towards the end there because yeah. he had to, I like to think his supporting cast is a little deeper and a little more talented this year, but We'll have to wait and see. It's going to be interesting, Greg. I think it's going to go down to the wire, though. Should be entertaining. Don't miss it it's going live. To be a great one. I'm really looking forward to this one. This <laughs> yeah, is going to be. Yeah. A, well, let's hope it's as fun as we as we all think it is. And you know, obviously, it would be fun if if the Bills won big. But let's hope we're not disappointed in you know in a, in a bad loss. But um, I'm hoping this is you know a high scoring, fun game to watch. Yeah. Thanks right. as always, Greg. We appreciate it. We'll look Thanks, for you Greg. on the ESPN NFL matchup show talking about this one more. Thanks much. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.